This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. Be the most exciting or the most terrifying day of your life. One year away from everyone you know and love. One year in the complete unknown. It's a rite of passage for thousands of young Russian men. A chance to find out what they're really capable of. I was joining them on this journey of discovery, and God knows it was going to be tough. Take a deep breath and hold it. What's your full name? Brown James. Have you ever done any sports? I swim. Excellent. Everything's fine. Take this with your right hand. Arm to your side. Squeeze. Harder. Perfect. Dear Oksana, I can't believe I'm actually writing this. I'm going to join the Russian paratroopers, the VDV. My fellow recruits are all just 18 and they look it. This is their first time away from their parents, but at least for now, none of them seem too nervous. The regiment's based in Tula, a few hours drive away from Moscow, and when we pulled into the barracks, I knew there was no turning back. Comrade soldiers, you're in the military now. No more joking anymore. Here, according to military regulations, we perform our active duty. Now to positions. Dress left, turn right, form a single rank, march on the double. Private Brown. Bed number 88. Unpack your personal belongings. In three minutes, gather in the corridor. This is boot camp. All the new guys are locked in together in the complex for a minimum of one month. And it's as crowded as I'd feared. There must be at least 80 bunks in this one room. And we were issued our new beds and told to make them, quickly. Make the bed. First, smooth out the lower mattress, then put the upper mattress on it. Put one bed sheet on top. Too slow. Faster, faster, faster! Any questions, Private Brown? Everything's clear. 20 seconds left! Everyone's sheets must be the same level! Private Brown, that's not how you make a bed. Tuck the foot towel under the mattress! Tuck it under! Our beds were all botch jobs, but we passed inspection. I'm going to have to get used to being ordered around. Tomorrow, the hard work begins. Rise and shine, company! Faster, faster! Put on your sports uniform, comrade paratroopers! Come on, soldiers! Faster, faster, you don't have much time! As I thought, day one was just a walk in the park. At 6am we're awake, at 6.10 we're up and running. This is just a short one, a couple of kilometres to get the heart pumping, because we're only getting started. Finish the exercise. Even though I'm probably fitter than I've been for years, this is a totally different level. One, two. Push, push. Do as many push-ups as you can. I can safely say I'm never going to get used to doing knuckle push-ups on gravel. Are you tired, soldier? Do you think it's gonna be easy? 
Go on with the exercise. Come on, come on. A bit more. Let's get ready to run. We don't call them good soldiers or bad soldiers. The commander that can't transform any conscript into a good soldier is a bad one. The main thing is that a soldier has to want to become better. In a year, they'll be back home, not as boys, but as true men who understand the army way of life and have stood shoulder to shoulder with their comrades. A year is not enough to become a real soldier, I know, but at least a year of army service behind your soldiers is quite a good experience to have. It means a lot. Three times a day we're marched into the mess hall to eat. The food is bland, tasteless, and portions are strictly controlled. This is where you get a real good look at who's actually in the army. There are lads here from all over Russia, and some from the old Soviet Union. Guys with the faces of hardened veterans and kids that look like they haven't started shaving yet. It's an interesting mix and a little intimidating. What do your family think about you being in the army? Well, they're not worried. I've told them it's a good military base. Everything's fine. Nothing seemed particularly difficult to me. A man must serve in the army. That's what I believe. I don't respect people who avoid military service. Commence partial disassembly. Today I also had my first meeting with my new best friend, my AK-74 assault rifle. In combat, this is what's going to save your life. So God help you if you don't look after it. Taking care of your gun means knowing it inside and out, and we're all expected to be able to strip it and put it back together. Some of the guys can do this in 20 seconds or less. For now, I'm more worried about accuracy. Machine guns are hard, so all newcomers hurt their hands. Your hands will get used to it and become harder, more agile. You're not going to touch a gun as though it were a woman. You do everything quickly. You shouldn't be too gentle. Some people become so skilled at it that they can assemble and disassemble it with their eyes closed and with one hand. For instance, if you get wounded, you'll have to assemble it with just one hand. They improvise. Marching drill. The arm moves on two. Like this. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. In front of your torso. One. Stronger. Two. Right turn. March. One. Paratrooper, do not change your arms so often. One, two, three. Step on all of your feet. Private Brown. Right leg, left arm. One, 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 two, three. Private Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Your arm moves are terrible. That will not do. An hour of marching practice for you? Right after dinner. Yes. Another constant for us every day is going to be marching practice. The fundamentals of soldiering. Put your hands and feet in the right place, at the right time, to the right rhythm. I guess this is why they call it drill, because unless it's hammered into your skull until it sticks, it's easy to mess it up. We can spend hours on the square trying to get it right. One thing we all have in common is how exhausted we are by lights out. 11 p.m. you've got dozens of men ready to collapse. The Russians have a saying that something stinks like a barracks, and it's certainly true. We're just all too tired to care.
I knew today was going to be tough when we lined up in front of our heavy equipment. We put on a flak jacket, helmet, gas mask, and webbing, about 25 kilos worth, and we're told, get ready to run. This is what they call a forced march, and it's brutal. Two kilometers would normally be a breeze, but soon the extra weight has your shoulders in agony, and my new boots were killing me. They give us 20 minutes to recover in the shade, but I was struggling, and I was wondering how the others were coping with everything. Well, life's changing. It's not civilian life. Now we live according to army regulations. You stop thinking all about yourself. You start telling your comrades about adjusting their uniform and things like that. We're one team now. Shift! Two arms! After several dummy runs with the AKs, we were ready for the real deal. Live fire exercises. And they don't disappoint. Private Brown, ready to fire! Fire! First up, range shooting. Targets, 100 meters. Pull smoother! The weather was becoming a real problem though. It was already way over 30 degrees, and I was starting to overheat. Private Brown, firing, firing finished. But I think you'd still be proud of my first effort. Private Brown, you're a good shooter. Your shots are tight, but you don't hold the gun firmly enough against your shoulder. That'll lead to recoil so the bullets go higher. The best part is seeing the end result. When I know I haven't wasted my time on these guys. It wasn't all in vain. I can see that I've taught them to hit a target with the first shot, to take parachute jumps. I see the results of all of my efforts. Everything else is routine in this tough life of ours. I also learned that I'll be firing a bazooka this week. You'll no doubt be pleased to hear. Private Brown, ready to fire. Hit the target with a grenade. Fire! Don't worry, I have been having lessons, so hopefully I won't blow myself up. Wow. I can't hear anything. Just... That's the real army. <laughs> and my young comrades with... Private Brown, get out here! Dear Oksana, you know that one year's military service is compulsory here for men aged 18 to 27, but many try to avoid it, some legally, others less so. In 2013, 650,000 conscripts reported for duty, but that's only 70% of those who are eligible. Bringing more recruits into the ranks is a priority for the top brass. As for me, I think I'm finally starting to get it. The fitness work is becoming a little easier, I'm getting better with my gun, and feeling more like a real part of the unit. Of course, there's one thing that we're all waiting for more than anything else. The thing that makes the VDV unique. What? Look, here we've got the main parachute. And here are three harnesses to pack the parachute away properly. Look, we're working too. You help me with that side of the canopy. All of us have to undergo a minimum of two weeks parachute training before our first jump, and there's a lot to take in. We team up and work in pairs, but the captain is always nearby to make sure we're doing it properly. A mistake here could literally be the difference between life and death. Start pulling down carefully. Go, go, go. Don't take the chamber off the cloth. Stop. 
Okay, stop. Don't lift it. You can't pull it here. It's forbidden. It would end badly. My training partner Ivan isn't far into his military service, but he's finding it tough being away from home. I can see you're married, yeah? I am. That must be difficult, being here without her. To me and to her, yeah, but we can get over it. I mail her. This is much better than calling on the phone or sending messages. She says it's always so nice to have my letters that it makes her want to cry. I received my first mail here in the first week of service, and I will remember it forever. Everyone's writing home about their jumps. It's a real rite of passage here, the first time you feel like a para. If I'm honest, I'm trying not to think about it too much. I've never been particularly happy with heights. But it's not just the air we have to be at home in. There's a special reconnaissance unit assigned for sea and river missions, which might have to gather information or clear mines for following troops. And I was invited to an underwater training session. The instructor uses signals to indicate when the valve is closed. He will give a no-air signal. If you run out of air, you look for the nearest partner and take a spare mouthpiece from him. In this situation, it's important not to panic. Keep calm and look for a partner. Everything was going well up to the point we practice what to do if your air runs out. You're not supposed to hold your breath while diving, but you certainly don't want your lungs to be empty when your supply goes dead. Because you'll be under, grab your enemy, take him and block him. There's also the possibility you might have to engage the enemy. So, in a scene that reminded me of an old Bond movie, I was taught the basics of underwater fighting. One quick and permanent way to disable your opponent is to cut off his air. But of course, in the pool, you need to make sure you get his regulator back to him quickly. One thing you learn quickly is that life in the VDV is rarely quiet. If it's not a shouted order or a hundred stamped boots, there's always the regimental song to learn. At least it calms down a bit in our free time. We still battle, mind you, although it's a little more mental than physical, and we're always finding out new things about each other. I want to sign a contract. I didn't expect to like it here so much. Actually, all the men in my family have been in the military, so I want to go to military academy to keep doing my military activities. And checkmate. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'll have to practice more. You played well. My friend Alan seems to have mapped out his future. Most of us are still preparing for our first jump. We leap from tire to tire to toughen up our feet, and then it's on to the trampoline. From the center, one by one, ground. Although it's anything but bouncy. Count down. It can happen while you're airborne that a fellow jumper moves towards you. So to avoid collision, you have to give a command. A command to diverge. Louder. Pull the back one, soldier. Push up more. Keep your legs together. Harder, harder, harder. Pull, pull. You have to pull yourself up to shoulder level. Then it will make sense. Attention, please. First, to how you exit the aircraft. Information. The closer you group, the better. You should bend your knees slightly, like you do on the ramp when you get ready to land. Got it? Yes, sir. Questions? No, sir. Right. Number one. Hook up and go on. 
We were ready for our first big tests. We hooked ourselves up to our model plane and prepared to jump. I just hoped it was going to go smoothly. Five hundred and one, five hundred and two, five hundred and three, pull, five hundred and four, five hundred and five, canopy. Thanks, guys. I say that if you're in your right mind, you're bound to be scared. Everyone's afraid. Everyone gets scared. But you have to overcome that fear and take that step to jump off the plane properly. Then wait for your parachute to deploy. And then you'll be overcome with emotion. When you're on guard duty, you have plenty of time to watch people. And even though I've seen tempers flare several times, the only thing that's been thrown around is some colorful language. It seems to have been drummed into the guys that the man next to you might save your life one day, and you need to treat him accordingly. I've been trying to put my faith in a parachute to save my life. Logically, I know it would. In reality, I'm not so sure. It was time for my last boot camp jump. The exercise in the model plane had gone like clockwork. But as I saw the ground get further and further away, everything became horribly real. Even watching someone else wasn't making it easier. I was 40 meters up, and every fiber of my being was telling me to head straight back down the ladder. After we hook you, you step on this parapet. On my command, ready, you adopt the stance. Upon the command, go, you exit the tower. You ready? Get ready. Private Brown, out. When you leave exit tower, try to turn towards it. Private Brown, come on. Ready? Ready. Put your hand on the harness. Faster. It was a nightmare. One half of my brain saying, you've seen it's safe. You've trained for this. And the other screaming at me, if you jump off this tower, you're going to die. James. Concentrate as much as possible. When I feel something's holding me, it's okay. Here, I don't feel anything. It's really frightening. It's just that. It's okay. Lower your head. Ready? Half a step with your left foot. I don't want to do it. I really don't want to do it. I don't know what, look, can you stop filming? Because I'm, I'm just, I've, I've got nothing left. I don't know what to do here. I hated myself for not being able to jump. I hoped I'd get another chance, but that was going to have to wait. Boot camp was almost over, and I was looking forward to watching the troops take the Pledge of Allegiance. Hello, paratrooper guards! Hello, comrade colonel of the guard! That is... It's a proud moment for the soldiers, and their whole families are there to see them. I swear to fulfill my military duty honorably, to defend freedom, independence, and the Russian Federation, my people and my homeland. And VDV veterans are on hand to offer the new soldiers some words of advice. I serve the Russian Federation! Congratulations and good luck in the paratroopers. I wish you good discipline, good fighting kit, and good studies. I serve the Russian Federation. 
My wish is for these guys to serve conscientiously and prepare well for the year, so that in the event of war or any other unforeseen circumstances, we'll be able to fulfill our combat role honorably. There's no question my time in boot camp has been the most physically demanding of my life. But you quickly feel that you're part of something special. The sense of comradeship is very genuine here, even for an outsider. I've got no doubts that in a combat situation, these guys would lay down their lives for each other. Among a group of non-professional soldiers, many still teenagers, that shocked me most of all. Some of them will stay in Tula, others, like me, are destined for regiments around Russia. It's still possible I'll get the opportunity to redeem myself, but for now, I'm on leave. Although you already know that. Oh, Russian paratroop regiment's motto is nobody but us. Earning that blue beret will push you harder than you've ever been pushed in your life. They say, once a para, always a para. And many of the conscripts like a permanent reminder. So, That's all. So you beauty, you're one of us now. I see Dress right. Eyes forward. Dress right. Attention. Hand-to-hand -to -hand combat maneuvers. On my count, by division. One. Two. Three. Four. My new regiment in Novorossiysk is heavily focused on combat training, and every day we're out on the square learning our unarmed fighting drills. At the moment, we work individually but it won't be too long before we're facing off against each other. It's the elite. And a real man has to be ahead of everyone, to be the best. I think that the paratroopers are the greatest. Just like in Tula, everyone is assigned various responsibilities each day. I'm back on guard duty, although this time I'm at the front of the base rather than in the barracks. Duty guard for the control point. Reason for your visit. Returning to base. Your documents. Security is paramount. Every vehicle that drives up has to be thoroughly checked. Even our own trucks. Nobody takes any chances here. It's only after we've looked into every nook and cranny that they're allowed on the base. I'm not sure whether it's the benefit of experience but everyone seems more confident here. And it's a good thing, because our live fire exercises are about to be ramped up. It's a tough job for the man in charge. Sometimes I get tired of ordering people. It happens from time to time that guys don't obey me. But I was given the task of commanding the company and I have to do it. So in any case, I'll remember this time with a smile. It was tough sometimes, but everything will be fine. I'm sure. We'll do our military duty. Today, the war games really got started. We were assaulting a hill with full armor support. The machine gunner goes first. Second is... Private Brown. Private Brown. After him, the squad leader. You're next. And you bring up the rear beside the vehicle. Everyone, mind your distance. Look around to check for your comrades. And remember you're using live ammunition. So your life depends on following the safety procedures. And you have to come back safe and sound. Any questions? No, sir! 
I was crouched in the bottom of a boiling hot tank. There's barely room to breathe, let alone move. Go, go! And then just like that, you're out and running. Get into position! Number one, go! Run, run! Our six-man squad spread out and headed to our places. What the Attack! Move up! Yeah. Number one, go! We were moving at a rate of knots. Run, crouch, and fire. But you've got to make sure the right person is in your sights. Stop! Don't shoot! Move there, Jubadilov. He's aiming right in front of you. And you've got two close to each other. Don't shoot when you're behind someone. Number one, go! Heading downhill, it's a nightmare just staying on your feet. Although when the tank and the grenade launcher open up alongside you, it does tend to push you forward. By the time we hit the bottom, my legs were in agony. As I tumbled into my foxhole, I don't think I could have taken another step. We get around an hour and a half each day to ourselves, and at least there's a TV room where we can chill out. Most of the time I just use it to recover, or to write to you, of course. But there's always someone new to chat with. What was the hardest moment for you here? Here in the army? Well, probably all the physical training. Apart from that, some drills, like marching drills. Jumping isn't easy either. And after the army, have you decided what you want to do yet? No, I'm studying at university and want to find a good job and be the best in my field of logistics. If possible, I'd like to stay in the army as a contractor, because they pay well now and allow you to do external studies. Life in the dormitory is like being in a five-star hotel. You sleep so much better when you only have to deal with two other people snoring. Hey, how are you, James? I'm good. How are you? Good enough. Nothing special. And I'm going to need all the energy I can get. We've been building up to our first day of full sparring, and most of the time we're working on shadow boxing and evasive maneuvers. Come on, come on. You're slacking. Sharper hits. You hit with a straight arm. And you block. Understand? Attention, everyone. Get ready. So, practice speed. Continue with your right arm. Once we've warmed up, it's time to pick a partner and start scrapping. Fight. Because eventually, you're going to have to pull on the gloves and the headgear and try and knock the hell out of each other. Come on, come on, use your legs. Come on, come on. Too slow. Defend, defend, block. Come on, come on, Bogdanov. Come on, come on. Stop. Dismissed. I last did karate about 20 years ago. I'm going to have to remember it fast. In the meantime, I was taking on one of the Mountain Regiment's toughest challenges, the DCP assault course. The whole thing is a hellish endurance test. Climbing, jumping, abseiling, and shooting with no chance of a break. Move, move! Crouch down, you two! Cover them! The idea is to train you to overcome extreme conditions, whether you're walking along narrow ledges... James, move, move! Raise your gun! Faster! ...or leaping down canyons. You watch your friends back and clear out any oncoming enemies. This paratrooper's obstacle course must be crossed by a division as a whole. It means that the success of fulfilling tasks doesn't depend on a single soldier, but on cooperation between soldiers of this division. Cover 
each other until the end. Each soldier polishes the skills he had acquired before coming here from their own units. So we improve what they had already learned before. As you can see, soldiers manage this obstacle course well. The divisions work in coordination. It's okay, James. It's war. Move, move. It's things like this that make you realize just how fit a paratrooper needs to be. I got to the climbing wall, and I had nothing left to give. Look, you're grabbing it wrong. Take it like that. There's a hold, you see? Use your fingers like that. Push closer to the rock. Feel it. Lie on it. Put your right leg there. Stand up and straighten it. Come on, come on. Try harder. To the end. The blue hold. Come on. It's too hot. I can't have no more strength. That's it. So. Our obstacle course ends here with this climbing wall. If you fail to do your task here, you let the whole group down. His life and his life depend on you. You must cooperate. If one of you fails, it means all of you fail. Right, use your head. You have to think. Now's the time when you think. Higher, higher. Go. There you are. Keep going. Excellent. That's it. Great. Grab the loop. Come on. But it's one for all and all for one here. There's always someone there to help you get through. Come on, there's not much left. Come on, come on, do it yourself. Come on, well done. Stand up. Well done. It's done. Come on. You've got a satisfactory result. I'm pleased with you. The task is complete. You've done well. I've got nothing to say. Excellent. Give me five. Comradeship is vital in the army. We try to build a good team spirit to make a friendly atmosphere. I help you today, tomorrow you help me. You couldn't get through the fence today and you got stuck. I helped. Tomorrow I could fail too and, God forbid, injured myself. And you'll help me. That's what's important in the army, friendship and a close-knit team. In situations like this, real team spirit reveals itself. You can see straight away who's your friend, who's not. All the training in the world can't really prepare you for an actual fight, though. I'm just hoping it's true that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Don't touch the headgear, okay? No grabbing it. No hits to the groin. Kick or low kicks at best, nothing more. If anything happens, break off immediately. Ready? Begin. James! You okay? <laughs> James, are you alright? <laughs> Raise your hands. Ready? Ready? Not really, no. <laughs> Come on, James. Faster. Right, stop. 
A soldier who has never fought, never met his enemy face to face, or never felt the strength of his enemy, is not ready psychologically or physically to fight. That is why the most important and the only possible way to overcome those fears is to practice and to spar. One thing you do learn in the paratroopers, though, is persistence. If you get knocked down, you've got to get back up again. Arms higher, arms higher. Come on. Go for the body. Stop, stop, stop. stop. <laughs> Yes. Well done. Oh, that was a good lesson. You're okay. Oh, I feel a bit sick, of course. Yeah, that's the f***ing army. Of course, hand-to-hand -hand combat is a last resort. Ideally, our heavy artillery should make sure the enemy never gets that close. In our tank drills, we're out patrolling the hills almost every day. Riding on top is a double-edged sword. You're spared the intense heat from inside, but you have to hang on for dear life and hope you manage to inhale some air among the clouds of dust. The tanks are notoriously temperamental, and maintaining them is a full-time job. At first, we all have girlfriends. We call them and feel happy. Then in three or four, sometimes even five months, it's like, what's wrong? I've broken up with my girlfriend. Why? She cheated on me. How do you know? My friends told me. It happened to me too. Everything seemed to be fine. Then I called and her cell phone was off. Yeah, anyway, she's not the only one. Apparently, the army gives you women trouble. Who'd have thought it? Don't forget, it's not too long till I'm coming home. We've been moved into a field camp, so sadly my days of comfortable living are over. There are about 30 of us sharing a tent, and most of our chores involve digging out the ground for new ones to be put up. I'm spending a lot of time with my tank platoon. Apparently, they've got something special in store for me. I'm not sure whether to be worried or not. James, now we're going to drive a tank over you. This will test your courage and resolve. Brace yourself. Ready? Ready. Get into position here. Lie down. Head forward and tuck your gun under. Head in the right direction of the tank. Keep your elbows close. The closer you keep them, the lower you'll be. Ready? Let's go. Congratulations! Your training has been a success. You've done it! The more you train your soldiers, the more you learn about them. You see what they can do and how they can do it. You become confident in them and in yourself as well. If anything were to happen, you're sure they'll do everything well. This unit is capable of performing any task because of this training. Listen up! The enemy's been identified. Our group is going to lie in ambush with the objective of capturing one of the captains, officers, or sergeants. Captain of the group, lay an ambush on this side. Is the task clear? Yes, sir. Begin. Understood. Move up, team! Gunner, get into position. Private Brown, smoke will signal the attack. You take the left flank, I'll take the right. Are 
I just got used to having the tanks on my side. Now we have to learn how to ambush one. What's your route? I'll never tell. What's the route? Are you sure? Out. We're taking the route across the pass. Fifteen light armored vehicles. They haven't taught us interrogation techniques yet. I think that must be an advanced course. One of the regular favorites here is buckwheat with a chunk of canned beef. But it's calories and we all empty our mess tins. Despite the fact that we're living in a muddy field, we still have to keep ourselves clean and tidy. And there are a few tricks I've been able to pick up. How do you feel altogether? I mean, at the beginning. Initially, we didn't understand each other at all, of course, because we were all from different cultures with different approaches to life. At first, there were conflicts, but in two or three weeks, we got used to each other and became friends. Everything's been fine since. He learned to get on with people. It's essential here. Your tunic is almost ready. We only have to dry it. When it's dry, it'll look fine. Just stamp it a bit more here so that it won't rip. Lights out! Light out! Light out! Tomorrow I get a chance of redemption. All the training, all the laughs, all the pain. I'm about to find out if it's been worth it. One thing's for sure, it's going to be terrifying. A couple of weeks ago, if you'd told me I'd be sitting on the tarmac, waiting to jump out of an aeroplane, I'd have laughed at you. My last training session on the practice tower was a disaster. I couldn't go through with it. That was only 40 meters. I'm about to try 800. Jumping from an Aleutian is worse than from an Antonov. With the Antonov, it's like jumping off a stool. You just drop. Nothing to be afraid of. But here, a strong gust catches you, and it's just amazing. Do you think you're ready, yeah? Yes, I am. Well, let's see. I hope so. We're waiting for what seems like hours. Eventually, we get the all clear. Good weather's due on the horizon. Perfect jumping conditions. There's no backing out this time. I'm going to have people in front of me and behind. If I don't go, no one else can. It's not an option. The equipment's checked one last time, and we're ready to fly. Everyone's handling it in a different way. There are guys here who've jumped three or four times, and there's me, who's never done it before. I'm trying to think about anything rather than what's about to happen as the plane takes off. I hope I'm in for a soft landing. First the tank goes out the back, and then it's our turn. This is what makes the VDV unique. The guys say it's better when you can't see the ground. I hope they're right. Your shoots actually open must be the greatest feeling in the world. Sheer blissful relief. Turn with the wind direction. 
It's easy to lose your concentration, but you still have to think about landing. The wrong position could mean a broken leg, or worse. Disperse! Take the harness off. <laughs> I'd actually made it. For that brief moment, I felt like a paratrooper. Well, Private Brown, now you're more than just a parachute jumper. You're a real paratrooper. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Now, into position for the initiation. Into position for the initiation. Go on, let's do it. One, two, three. 501, 502, 503, pull. 504, 505. Canopy! <laughs> Nobody but us. That's our motto. It's our way of life. No task is impossible. We can make it all happen. It doesn't matter what kind of situation it is. We have to be there first and fulfill the task, to make our government proud of us. And this is our motto for life. It's how we live. Good luck. Goodbye, my friend. I'll see you, buddy. Right often, don't forget us. Take care. Houston, don't break my hand. I can see why everyone says they're different men after the army. It's some sacrifice these young soldiers have to make. For me, it was exhilarating, agonizing, heartbreaking, and amazing. But I won't lie, I'm relieved. I'm coming home. The modern army sniper is the result of over 200 years of battlefield evolution. But sniping today is changing like never before. Army snipers are fighting on an increasingly technologically advanced battlefield that has required them to modify their tools, tactics and techniques to be effective in any theater, from the streets of Baghdad to the mountains of Tora Bora. These two to eight-man teams combine the ability to provide key intelligence to command with the capacity to surgically eliminate the enemy with either precision rifle fire or by directing the wrath of U.S. shock and awe. The key to supremacy on the modern battlefield is flexibility. The U.S. Army has designed a sophisticated training program for snipers that allows them to quickly adopt new tactics to match the enemy. What we're finding is downrange in country, in both areas of operation, that our adversary is evolving. So as we find out what TTPs the enemy is utilizing in theater now, we immediately push that to the front of our training. Then we discuss how to counter it. In the Second World War and Vietnam, the sniper was confined to a more static standoff role. But experience in the Middle East has shown that sniper teams are just as successful as a mobile close-in tool. First of all, we are never complacent. We are always looking for ways to improve how we train. We are always looking for ways to make our product, which is a trained sniper, uh, to be the best trained and the best, most capable precision marksman possible. Snipers are definitely just, they're going to see stuff that other guys may not see because we train ourselves to observe for target indicators, guys holding weapons, guys acting shady, and that's going to allow us to pinpoint the enemy a whole lot faster than the average guy on the ground. Each year, the sniper school accepts 320 students to attend the rigorous five-week course. Acceptable candidates must meet stringent mental, physical, and marksmanship requirements before being selected. 
They are the best and the brightest in the Army, but not all will graduate as snipers. We only get 250-odd students through a year, uh, whereas at Ranger School down the road, you know, they get 200 students uh, every three to four weeks. So we're, we're a very centralized, very small community in the Army. With the tremendous success of snipers in current conflicts, this small community is receiving pressure to expand and produce more snipers. However, this is a difficult task. You can't just stamp out a sniper. It takes time, it takes training, it takes diligence, it takes perseverance, it takes a number of things, none of which can be mass produced. And that's the biggest challenge that us as a schoolhouse has to face to try and fill the Army's needs for snipers. Another major challenge the sniper school is facing is the lack of knowledge from commanders in the field on how to employ snipers effectively. To remedy this, the sniper school began a program training battlefield leaders on how best to utilize their snipers. We're getting this knowledge out there and that was the biggest base uh, that we were seeing was the disconnect between the sniper and his commander. So now that we have the Sniper Employment Leaders course, we're able to uh, train commanders all the way up to battalion level on how to employ this asset that they have. This is how you need to employ your snipers. We show them new equipment that's available to the snipers and how it's going to enhance their capabilities at unit level. To better understand the capabilities of the snipers under their command, the leaders are given an opportunity to try the sniper's most prized piece of equipment, the sniper rifle. World War I, World War II, you're simply taking the weapon that is being issued to the soldier, some, sometimes just putting a telescopic sight on it. Today, every aspect of the development of a particular sniper rifle, extensively researched, what is being fielded today is by far you know, the best that the military can produce and equip the American soldier with. This is the uh, M24 sniper weapon system. It uh, uses the uh, 7.62 NATO cartridge and has a uh, free-floating match grade barrel. The M24 is a, is, a, is a battle proven system. It is a great weapon system that has been employed by the U.S. Army probably for the last 20 years. It really stood the test of time. It is still a, a devastating weapon system as long as it's in the hands of a well-trained sniper. Teaching these sniper school students to master the M24 are some of the best instructors in the world. They all have had extensive combat experience and share their first-hand knowledge to help prepare their students. And we have a set standard that we have to teach, but at the same time, there's always 